Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Definition and this is the channel where we've been watching The Watchmen to break down everything that you need to know about the new season on HBO. Throughout this video we're going to be breaking down one of the most enigmatic characters in comic book history. That is Dr. Manhattan, the godlike being that found himself at the centre of both Lady True and the Seventh Cavalry's plans. We're going to be going over the character's entire history, his powers, abilities, how he views time and what we think may have happened happen to him at the end of the season. There will be heavy spoilers here, so if you aren't fully caught up with the show and don't want to know what happens, then I highly suggest that you turn off now. To avoid any confusion, I'll be sticking with the graphic novel timeline and the HBO show that follows it, but we may be covering the Doomsday Clock timeline down the line, so keep an eye out for that. Without the way, I just want to give a huge thank you for clicking this video. Now let's get into our breakdown of Dr. Manhattan. John Osterman was born 1929 in Germany. The son of a watchmaker, John quickly learnt the skills of putting timepieces together and regularly he and his father went through the inner workings of clocks, dismantling them and putting them back together piece by piece. In 1939, before the outbreak of the Second World War, John and his family left Germany because apparently his mother was Jewish. According to the graphic novel, when escaping the country, they were stopped at the border and during this, John's mother ran out from the wagon. This apparently distracted the soldiers long enough for his father to kill both of them, but John's mother was unfortunately murdered in the process. The show changes this up slightly and says that John's mother actually ran off with an SS officer and she ended up abandoning them. It is possible that this is the truth and out of shame John lied as the story about his father suddenly become a murderer that is capable of taking out two soldiers, well it seems a bit far fetched. We don't have any concrete answers for this, but at least there is enough here so you can draw your own conclusions. John and his father ended up staying at a countryside castle that became a safe haven for refugees and those fleeing the war. While sneaking about, John hid in a cupboard and saw two people having sex. They found him and confronted the character about it, passing him a bible and explaining the story of Adam and Eve, requesting that he return to the castle one day after he's created something beautiful. These two would later go on to become the Adam and Eve that John would create on the moon of Europa. After this stop off, John and his dad moved to New York, where his father, Joseph, continued his career as a watchmaker, however after the theory of relativity was created, he abandoned this profession. John, who was supposed to follow in his footsteps, was then led down a course of studying science, where he studied between the years of 1948 to 1958. John graduated with a PhD in atomic physics, and in 1958 he gained a job at a research base at the Gila Flats. This position included studying intrinsic fields, which are basically what holds matter together and stops atoms from shifting and falling apart. John would later learn how to manipulate intrinsic fields, which is how he's able to deconstruct and reconstruct both himself and things around him. At the base he met Wally Weaver and Janie Slater, who he vividly remembers bought him a beer. Janie was the first woman that ever did this for him and the two began dating, eventually going to the Palisades Amusement Park in New Jersey where they were photographed together. This photograph becomes one of the most important images in Dr. Manhattan's life and throughout the graphic novel we see him obsessing over it at several points. Also when they were at the amusement park, Janie's watch strap snapped and ended up falling to the floor. A passing man stood on it and John picked it up, vowing to fix it using his skills as a watchmaker. A month later, during the conducting of an intrinsic field test, John accidentally left the watch in the chamber and as he was going to give it to Janie as a gift, he ended up rushing back for it, unfortunately becoming locked in the chamber as the countdown to the launch of the experiment begun. Unable to escape, John became trapped in the chamber and his colleagues, including Wally, ended up watching on as he was torn apart in front of them. Janie couldn't bear to watch it and thus she ran out of the room, leaving John calling out her name in what was really a heartbreaking moment. John was disintegrated and seemingly killed in the blast and though a token funeral was held for him, there was absolutely nothing to bury. The only thing that remained of him was the photograph, which was placed in a memorial at the Gila Flats. However, John was not dead and he slowly began to reconstruct himself similar to the watches that he used to build. At the Gila Flats, a nervous system appeared and then later it was followed by a circulatory system. Not long after, a screaming skeleton materialised on the grounds before John did fully in the cafeteria on November 22nd, 1959. The Superman is here, he exists and he's American. John, now thrust into the limelight, became a superhero, working for the American government under the name Dr. Manhattan, which was meant to strike fears in the enemies of the US due to its closeness to the Manhattan Project. 
he continued dating Janie Slater, even though he knew the two would break up. John is an immortal, standing still in time whilst those around him move, and thus Janie grows old whilst he never does, forcing the two to slowly gain distance between themselves. Under the name of Dr. Manhattan, John acts as an almost PR campaign for the US and ends up dismantling tanks publicly as a show of strength for the country. He even visits the moon during the Apollo moon landing, and this begins to make other countries in the world jealous of the US's newfound power. John's understanding of technology allows the world to advance at a much faster rate, and because of this, the Watchmen world is far more ahead than ours is. The advancements that he comes up with actually tip the Cold War in America's favour, and because of this, the rest of the world really begin to dislike the country. It's at this point that his relationship really comes under strain, and he and Janie argue and fight a lot. John is then called upon by Captain Metropolis in the hopes of becoming a member of a group known as the Crime Busters, and at their first meeting he comes across the second Silk Spectre, aka Laurie Jusipek. The meeting pretty much fails, but the group are all put into pairs, with Laurie and Doc being teamed up. Janie says that Doc made this happen, and that it wasn't done randomly, however John replies that they were always meant to be paired together. This kind of leads into our next point, which is actually how Dr. Manhattan views time. So, Dr. Manhattan views all of the moments within his lifetime at once. He's able to perceive each moment at the exact same time, and thus on the surface he appears to have the ability to see the future. However, all that he's doing is looking at a moment in the future, and relaying it to a point in the past. In Watchmen, a tachyon device is used by Ozymandias that limits his view of the future, and though he can't see during its activation, he can see around it. Look, it's very confusing, and I've tried explaining it multiple times, and yet it's very, very difficult. John describes everyone, including himself, as a puppet. However, he is able to see the strings, and because of this, he has some knowledge of being controlled. This is why he appears to just go through the motions, and why he doesn't get out of the way of the 7th Cavalry's cannon, as that was always meant to happen, and therefore he needed to be a part of it. The way that I've always looked at it is that the Watchmen graphic novel actually perfectly demonstrates how the character views time. Okay, so if you read the graphic novel, you can see the events play out in it. You can read it from front to back, back to front, choose any page at random, but the events, the story, it always plays out the same. John is basically a god because in some ways he is us, above the story, reading it, able to control what part of it plays out at that moment for him, and he has the ability to jump back and forth through it depending on what moment he wants to see. However, he cannot affect it and this is why he must continue doing certain things. John also has the ability to teleport, assemble and disassemble matter, levitate, fly, shapeshift, basically do whatever he wants, or rather, whatever the story wants him to. Anyway, that's a big tangent from his bio. So, when patrolling with Laurie, the two gain an attraction for one another, and he ends up kissing her. Janie finds out and leaves him, and not long after his father Joseph dies, he reveals his true name to the world. John and Laurie move to Washington together, and he's asked to intervene in the Vietnam War, which he ends not long after. In Vietnam, he comes across the comedian, who kills a woman that he got pregnant, and John refuses to stop this from happening, leading the comedian to say that he's losing his grip on humanity. Whilst the end of the war is great for the US, it also raises fear in the rest of the world, which causes tension amongst the population of the planet. Distrust for vigilantes also begins to rise, and riots break out against costumed heroes. Mobs storm the White House, but the Doc teleports them all home, though two die from heart attacks during this. Not long after, Senator Keene passes the Keene Act, which outlaws masked heroes, though Doc continues working for the government, eventually moving to Rockefeller Military Research Center, where he lives with Laurie. With tension at boiling point and the fear of a nuclear apocalypse right around the corner, Ozymandias creates a plan to trick the world into uniting itself, and he begins working on faking an alien attack. During this, he infects Wally Weaver, Moloch, a previous enemy of John, and Janie Slater with cancer. Ozzy too kills the comedian, and Rorschach goes to warn him that there's a costume killer out on the loose, but he pays this no mind and transports him out of the area. Focused heavily on his work, he allows Laurie to go out with Dan Dryberg, and not long after, he attends the comedian's funeral. Later, Doc appears on a chat show, and during this, he's confronted by a journalist from the Nova Express, which is actually a magazine that Ozymandias owns. Here, he's accused of causing cancer to people that have gotten close to him, and in anger, Doc teleports everyone out of the building. 
Fed up with the planet, he returns to the Gila Flats and comes across the photo of himself and Janie and then he teleports to Mars. Tensions rise once more and with the US no longer having its best defence, the rest of the world turns their arms towards the country. The threat of nuclear war looms ever closer. Eventually he returns to Earth to see Laurie and together the two go to the Red Planet where she convinces him to help humanity. John realises that Laurie's very existence is an improbable miracle that had a billion to one chance of ever coming true and this restores his love for life. He returns to Earth too late however and Ozzy has already launched his attack which wiped out millions of people. With Laurie he travels to Antarctica to confront the character but Ozzy has a contingency plan in place and he disintegrates Doc using an intrinsic field weapon. Rorschach, Laurie and Night Owl look completely defeated. However, Doc has already put himself together several times and he returns once more, going after the character. Just as he's about to kill him, Ozzy reveals that his plan to unite the world worked and if the hoax is exposed then everything will fall apart. Rorschach cannot abide by this and thus Dr Manhattan is forced to kill him after the character says that he won't be silenced. It's a brutal moment in all adaptations and watching Rorschach scream do it. Uh, yeah that never gets old, I kind of butchered it there though. With Laurie now happy with Dan and humanity saved, Dr Manhattan decides to leave Earth in order to create life somewhere else. Ozzy asked if his plan worked and if he managed to end the war, to which Doc replies nothing ever ends. From the show we learn that Doc actually travelled to the Jupiter moon Europa in order to create life there. He rebuilds the castle from his childhood and makes humans in the image of the two that he met there, calling them Mr Phillips and Ms Crookshanks. Whilst living on the moon he sends a decoy to Mars to robotically carry out motions that made it look like he was on the planet and thus he's able to hide his true intentions. However, this place is too perfect for him and he requires all of the flaws that humanity have, thus he travels back to Earth and in 2009 he meets Angela Abar at a bar in Saigon. The two begin a 10 year relationship with John taking on the appearance of a dead man who doesn't have any family members in order to raise no questions. John, wishing to lead a normal life, decides to travel to Ozymandias for help. In exchange for a tachyon device that will rid him of his memories, Doc transports Ozzy to Europa where he can live on the utopia that he was so desperate to create. Before putting the device in his head he goes to see Will Reeves and together the two form an alliance to protect his and Angela's children in the future. Together with Angela the two travel to Tulsa and on an event known as the White Knight in which the 7th Cavalry attack police officers in their homes, he transports one of the attackers to the Gila Flats on pure muscle memory. This leads the 7th Cavalry to discover that Dr Manhattan is hidden in Tulsa and they begin to form a plan to capture the character and steal his powers, thus allowing them to rule the world. Lady True, made aware of the group by Will Reeves who used to be Hutter Justice, instead wants to save the planet and she too concocts a plan to steal the Doc's powers and wipe out the cavalry in one fell swoop. After Angela overdoses on Will's nostalgia pills in order to find out the truth about him, True saves her and reveals the cavalry's plan which makes her run home and unleash the Doc from the unwitting Cal. Doc potentially puts his powers into an egg and makes sure that Angela sees him walking on water as a way to demonstrate his godlike abilities. I think this plays into the ending which we'll get into in just a bit. The cavalry capture Cal and go to transfer his powers into Joaquin Jr but Lady True transports them to the site of the Greenwood Race Massacre where she is waiting with her Millennium Clock which can take the Doc's energy and transfer it. The Doc is sucked into the machine and seemingly killed but Ozymandias launches another squid attack which destroys True's machine and her powers. Angela returns home and finds the egg, eats it and then ventures out onto the pool which is when the season cuts to black. Now personally I believe that Doc is alive and this is because he was able to see the importance of the pool and relay it from the future to Angela. The Doc can only see within his own lifetime and not beyond it, thus in order to know that this would be an important place for Angela he would have to be aware of it. The Doc doesn't joke about and everything is absolute for the character so the significance of the egg in the pool definitely means something. I think Angela will gain his powers and be able to restore him as his energy was never absorbed by True and thus it's still out there somewhere waiting to return for season 2. Also yeah he made a duplicate on Mars so what? why would the one in the cage not be a duplicate? He seemed pretty bored. Anyway that, that's another theory. Now obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts on Dr Manhattan and if you agree with my theories or not. Comment below and let me know and if you enjoyed this video then please give it a thumbs up and make sure you check out our full breakdown of the finale in which we go over the overall plot, point out all the easter eggs you missed and give our theories on the next season. 
If you want to come chat to me after the video, then make sure you follow me on Twitter at DefinitionYT, or head over to my Discord server, which will be linked in the description below. We drop videos on there early, so if you want to see stuff before anyone else, then that's the best place to be. It's free to join and we have an awesome community, so hopefully I see you over there very soon. We're also giving away a free copy of Joker, which is one of our favourite movies of 2019, and all you have to do to be in with a chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and leave your thoughts on Dr. Manhattan in the comments section below. The winner's going to be chosen at random on the 15th of January and the set will be shipped out from then to forget the prize, so best of luck to everyone who takes part. This is a channel for people who are super into superheroes, so if that's the kind of thing you like, hit subscribe. Thank you for taking the time to watch this, I've been Definition, you've been the best, and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.